All right, guys, it's that time again. It's time for more Steven Revisiverse, the series where I go back and revisit Steven Universe, in case you couldn't tell from the name. And um, today we're talking about my own stuff again today, and this is just... This is another one of those ones where I'm just trying to check off some boxes, frankly. And um, honestly, I was gonna—I wanted to do this one as a live stream because I figured maybe getting some back and forth going with you guys would help me think of stuff to say about these because I don't think I'm gonna have much to say about these. Uh, but I, I still can't live stream for some reason. And I can't figure out why, and it's really bowing me out. But um, yeah, I'm, these these are just some boxes I need to check off. We're going, uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna go after three of them today. Let's see, uh, my gem weapons theory, my gem building is grown theory, and my home world's view and fusion theory, which are just really really super speculative. Like all I really do is try to surmise stuff that's already in the show but hasn't been fully clarified yet and we might talk about another theory too if i have time but i i won't even i don't i don't even plan to watch that video i just plan to talk about it briefly if i don't have time in this video i'm probably just gonna skip it actually let's just say i'll, I'll tack it on to the end of this one one way or the other because it's not even gonna be that long i'm uh, starting out with the gem weapon theory and um, let's let's that up start it out I've been wanting to talk about this in fact since the opening scene in the answer when Rose and Pearl appear and attack the court of blue diamond one detail that even the least keen observers seem to notice was that not one gem in the entire fight summoned a gem weapon I have been wondering ever since I saw this why this is and after following the evidence there's only one conclusion that I can draw First, however, before we get into the theory proper, I want to take a moment to define what I mean by a weapon in this case. And this is actually fairly important, because this is one of those ones where, like, I've gotten better about it, I'm, I still do it sometimes, but just the way my brain works, and I don't know if this is my ADHD or something else, but the way my brain works is sometimes I just cannot fathom that people cannot get into the same headspace as me easily. So, like, I just kind of assumed when I made this video that um, people would understand what I was talking about. I, I kind of foresaw that I would need to define what I meant by a weapon here, which basically I, it just comes down to an object summoned by the gem for some purpose that their body can't normally function uh, or can't normally perform, I guess is a better way to say that. So, a weapon or a tool, but something separate from the gem's body even even lapis's wings i would consider that because while they do come out of her gem and kind of affixed to her back they aren't literally attached to her right and we know that they give her the ability to fly that she wouldn't normally have because she couldn't fly back to homeworld until her gem was prepared enough to be able to summon them we also know that they're not made of regular water or else she could have just made wings out of regular water and flown back to homeworld that way we know that they are equivalent to one of these gem weapons. And that's that's what it came down to. But if I'm not mistaken, this is the one where I don't really explain something else as well as I should have. I'm looking at the comments. You guys have a lot of good theories in here. I, I really should have done... I, I, I Like, even way, way back when my channel started, I really should have done, like, like theory mashups where I talked about some of my weaker ideas and then some of your guys' ideas from the comments to kind of give you guys some, some I don't know, publicity <laughs> isn't the right word, but you know what I mean. Um, I never did, and I should have. I should have been more, like, community-minded. But, yeah, that that's basically what I mean by a weapon here. But if I'm not mistaken, there's something else I don't explain well enough in this video. I might be thinking of a different video. That we'll, we'll see when we get there, but, you know, I think that's still a, a, a habit of myself that's worth critiquing and this is a good, as good a chance as any to do it a summoned weapon is an object that a gem can create from their gemstone which serves some purpose in battle but it is not always the gem's primary weapon at this point in the series creating a summoned weapon has been treated as a very important milestone in a gem's life yeah and we can assume that it is an ability that all gems share as even steven the first half gem was expected to have this power and yet we don't see a single gem weapon summoned during the fight in the cloud arena why? 
Maybe it was an ability that gems used to know about a long time ago, but was forgotten by their society, or maybe it was something that was built into the gem equivalent of biology that the gems just didn't know they could do at the time. But I really think that they didn't know that they were capable of summoning weapons at the time of Rose's attack on the Cloud Arena. And I think that it was Rose and her crystal gems who discovered this ability and first, no pun intended, weaponized it. Look at it this way. On Homeworld, most gems do not possess a sense of individuality. Some of them seem to have a limited ability to make choices for themselves, but only within their caste and their designated purpose. They are still oppressed and limited, and the more common a gem is, the more she is treated like a non-entity by her superiors. However, we learn as early as Gem Glow that the summoning of a gem weapon is a very personal thing. Each gem has a different way of summoning their gem weapon by tapping into what makes them who they are as an individual. If we also consider that the only gems within the ranks of Homeworld which ever fight are the gems which are made for fighting, the quartzes and the rubies, which exist in large numbers, then it is unlikely that there was ever a fighting gem within the ranks of Homeworld with a strong enough sense of individuality to discover which emotion summoned their gem weapon. Until Jasper, I would imagine. Like, okay, so this isn't actually the video I was thinking of. I don't mention the thing here that I was thinking of. What video would that have been then? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it in case we get to it relatively soon. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I think I'm gonna stop it here. The, the, you guys can tell where where I'm going with this, right? So, um, that, that is not the button I meant to hit at all. Um, yeah, so let, let, I'm just gonna leave it there. We only got, like, like a minute left anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I do think this is still a good theory. I still do, do think that the idea that Homeworld gems until the war, let's say until the war, let's say gem weapons were rediscovered during the war, Okay. Um, until the war, until fighting between gems became such a big deal for, for so long, until gems were forced to fight others who were roughly their equal, and had to sort of come into their own in order to stand out in that and succeed in that, that weapons, gem weapons just weren't a thing. But I, I do think it's very possible that this is something that gems were always supposed to be able to do and they just forgot which really speaks to the fact that their society at the time of the, the war and onward was not how their society was originally designed to be, which is just more evidence, I guess, for the fact that whatever, whatever made White Diamond did not intend for her to behave the way that she did, right? And that's what that one comes down to. I, I still like this one. It's just, you know... Not one of my best, I don't think. It's just kind of obvious, I think. The next one, our gem building has grown. Do we even need to watch this one? Because we kind of know the answer now, don't we? That's the one where I theorized that because of the desert glass. Um, and the building under the water where they find the, the hourglass that seems to have part of it dematerialize, like a gem dematerializes when it poofs. Um, that gem buildings are grown using gems that aren't that aren't quite the same as people gems, but are still technically alive. And we, we straight up saw that in um in 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 what was it? I guess like the final arc of the original series when they're on Homeworld, we see like the wall gems and the door gems and stuff. Like that one's basically confirmed, isn't it? So um. I don't think we need to watch that one. Yeah. I promise I'm not just trying to get through these faster than I otherwise would. I really don't think we need to watch that one. Because, um, I think it's confirmed. Like, I'd still like to know the specifics of it. Because the the wall gems, I've, I've theorized elsewhere, don't seem like they can poof. Like, it seems like they are really made out of stone. And then, like, and yet, like, um, the the building underwater could poof, it seemed like. But maybe only certain parts of it can? To, like, allow large objects to enter the building or something? I don't know. There's a bit of an inconsistency there, and I'd like to know the specifics. But I do think, in general, that theory is confirmed. In fact, it suggests that, like, let's say, hypothetically, all of the wall and door gems are, like, the desert glass. 
where they create structures or parts of structures out of an actual material. That it suggests that those wall and door gems, if they were taught how to, and the desert glass too, if, 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 it, if it was taught how to, sorry, stuttering there for a second, could create actual bodies for themselves out of that material that they manipulate. Which is an interesting thought. That might be worth a theory video in and of itself. But yeah, let's move on to the next one. How does Homeworld view fusion? I think my thoughts on this are different now. I don't remember what's in this video exactly. This is one of those ones of mine that I don't revisit a lot because I'm fairly certain my thoughts on it have changed. I was being kind of edgelordy back then. I don't remember. We'll see. Let's let's get into it. Steven Universe and all associated images are property of Cartoon Still miss the old intro. For as long as I did, long because as 10 I minutes. We just got one of the most. That topic is, of course, how Homeworld views fusion. Uh, specifically cross-gem fusion, since they don't seem to have a specific issue with same-gem fusion and even utilize it as a tool. So I'm going to run through what I think are the three most important moments in the history of the show so far pertaining to this topic and analyze them a bit, and okay. then give a conclusion regarding how I think Homeworld views fusion specifically based on those instances. In the return, Jasper gestures to Garnet and calls her a shameless display. And then on Peridot's handship in Jailbreak, when the recently refused Garnet confronts Jasper, Jasper openly questions why Ruby and Sapphire would refuse. She doesn't understand because from her perspective, fusion is just a tactic to make weak gems stronger and should only be used by gems who already fight anyway. Otherwise, you're relying on someone else's power rather than your own, and that's just something that Jasper can't comprehend. Which I think is a hang-up of her own. But I definitely think it derives from a hang-up of Homeworld. Because what it really comes down to now is we, we know that... We, we know why cross-gem fusion is looked down upon by Homeworld. Because they see it as being akin to being off-color. Since, like, two of the off-colors were cross-gem fusions, right? That, that's what it is. Because it... it creates a new gem without a purpose and also prevents other gems, the ones involved in the fusion, from fulfilling their purpose within Homeworld society, right? That's the issue. And, like, I would imagine there would also be a certain stigma against gems that don't, quote-unquote, need fusion to be stronger, even if they are the same type of gem also fusing together, because then you have fewer gems to do whatever it is that they're supposed to do. I'm not, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna even go through the rest of this. I think I'm just going to talk about this for a minute. Because I'm, I'm fairly certain I get to roughly the same same... I, can't, I remember this more now. I think I get to roughly the same point as here, but I have more evidence now, I guess, to, to support my current thoughts. So let's just go over my current thoughts. But we know that that's why now, which means cross-gem fusion would not be an issue on Homeworld now that the off-colors aren't considered outcast, I guess, is the most delicate way of putting it. They're just people now. So what it really comes down to is, I would imagine until the war, again, until the war, this was just a thing that was looked down upon and gems who did it were forced to stop. But once the war happened, I kind of imagine that's when the real crackdown on it would have begun, right? Because cross-gem fusions happened in Rose's army. They were utilized against Homeworld as part of the rebellion. And it all seemed to start with Garnet, who they only really reacted as strongly as they did to Garnet because it was two gems from two radically different stations fusing with each other. Notice it was really only Ruby that they went after, because Sapphire is more privileged than Ruby is, right? Like, if people talk about how fusion is representative of romantic relationships in a lot of cases, or even sexual relationships, which isn't always true. It's not. Regardless of what some people say, it's not. Uh, but um, I, think, I think we could consider it analogous to that in, like, the... the interpersonal social aspect because that way it could be used as like not a one-to-one -one analogy but still an analogy for, for like 
like people in the queer community and their acceptance by society. But there's also this stigma of like power to it. I really do genuinely feel like Jasper's whole hang up was that she couldn't understand needing to rely on someone else's power. And that fits really well with her arc in the show eventually doing that thing to try to become strong enough to oppose the Crystal Gems. But then it gets kind of muddied, and I don't particularly like the way they muddy it. Like, I think Malachite was a cool idea, showing this abusive, codependent relationship as a fusion. But, like, lumping that in with something that can be analogous to, like, gay relationships, for example, I don't, I don't particularly like that. But, I mean, it's there, and it's, it's worth noting. So I guess Homeworld views fusion as we would view any relationship that we don't think is socially acceptable, <laughs> whether it's right for them to view fusion that way or not, because the relationships that they consider to be socially acceptable are obviously wrong to be considered not socially acceptable, right? But like, think of an equivalent relationship that our society at large doesn't think is socially acceptable and that's how homeworld views fusion right it's just that in the framing of the show homeworld is clearly incorrect and just because i brought it up in the video i think it's really cool actually the more i think about it that we get episodes showing that despite thinking poorly of such relationships, Homeworld still tried to take advantage of them and create the forest fusions. Because it really speaks to how, like, exploitative a society can be, even of things that it doesn't consider appropriate. And at the same time, it shows just how depraved Homeworld could be to take something that is expressive and, and poignant and turning it into something horrifying to use as a weapon. And like some people have blamed Rose for this. This is absolutely not Rose's fault. R Rose can be considered to blame or partially to blame for a lot of things because of the war. But the Force Fusions is absolutely not one of them. That is still something that Homeworld decided to do entirely on their own. And it's gross. <laughs> and so th I see the Force Fusions as sort of representative of how Homeworld sees cross-gem or just inappropriate in general fusions as these depraved, deformed monstrosities. Because we know that they were trying to create that for themselves just in a way that they can control and weaponize. Did they even see any difference between the misshapen forced fusions that emerged from their gems? and the ones fighting by Rose's side? We don't know, but I don't think they did, right? It's such a cool concept because it takes what the snooty upper crust at Homeworld would have thought of cross-gem fusion and lets us see it because it's right there in front of us. But it also shows that they felt like they needed the power of cross-gem fusions because eventually they went to the cluster, right? The cluster was their big play. You have to imagine they were hoping to weaponize the smaller ones too, right? In, in, in terms of like the war. They, they were willing to try to tap that power, but not to let their, their people reach the point where they would just be able to do that on their own, <laughs> right? It's just the, the, the force fusions, I, sh I should talk about them again soon because the more I think about the Force Fusions, the more I have to say about them. They're just such an interesting concept, and I don't feel like I ever spent enough time with them because the show just kind of moved past them so quickly. Even once we got to the climax of the Cluster arc, it was just over so quickly, right? But yeah, that's that one. And I still have tons of time. Uh, I still have tons of time in this one. This is going to be a short one. So I guess we'll talk about... What if Steven lost his gem? Which, I just theorized that if, if Steven's gem were remo removed, that because his all of his biological processes don't seem to run off the gem, he still has to eat and stuff, right? That he would survive. 
And people have said, oh, this one's been disproven by the show because we see that he would die without it. I don't think we did, though. Because remember, he was already in a high-stress situation, and it was removed in, like, a non-optimum way, right? It was just ripped out of his stomach by this thing that didn't care if the flesh sack survived. And also, he didn't have access to proper medical care. I still think that, while he would be weakened by it, because he does have a regular human body that can process regular human nutrients and stuff, that if he were given regular medical care after the fact he would be able to recover from losing his gem. I don't want that to happen. I don't particularly want to see him lose his gem again because that was pretty traumatic, but I still think he could survive. It would just be, he, he would have to recover from it, right? Though at this point, I don't know if he could lose his gem again and the same thing would happen because now he's not just the person with the gem attached to him. He's like literally fused with that thing that came out of the gem. He's not the same thing that he was before. He, he wasn't a fusion with himself before he lost the gemstone, right? That's new. And I don't know what effect it would have on his body to have half of him just poof away if the gem were ripped out of him. I imagine he'd explode or melt or something to that effect, but that's not the kind of show this is, so unless they're just going to invalidate the fact that he's a fusion now by that not happening. If we do ever get more content within this world, we can't see him lose his gem again. We just can't. It's just not possible. But yeah, hypothetically, Steven, as he was born, I do think he could still survive losing his gem. It would just be difficult. It would be rough on him. And he wouldn't be the same after the fact. And the fact that it didn't immediately kill him I actually think supports this more than anything in that episode outright refutes it. Like, we could have a discussion about it, and I would absolutely enjoy that, right? But I, I, don't, I, don't, think it's, I don't think it's proven or disproven at this point. I think it's still up in the air. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do today. Jeez. I mean, I, I could just do more, but, like, I kind of have a plan for how I want to handle these, right? In what order? I don't know. It's fine. Like I said, I was just checking off some boxes with this one anyway. And, um... The next ones are pretty interesting. They're ones that... That's the one I was thinking of. That's the one I was thinking of. Can all gems bubble? That's what I was thinking of. Okay, so we'll do that one next time. Because, um, like, I'll try to fit four in again next time. Because, like, the next one is my Harvest Theory, which is, I think, still fine. My Domains of the Diamonds Theory, which is only, like, one-third okay. <laughs> my Canal Gem Bubble Theory, which I'll just use to d talk about myself disparagingly again. And then my Future of Jasper Theory, which is completely disproven by the fact that Jasper had no future in the show except to uh, get Disney death in that final arc, unfortunately. Which is something we will also talk about, probably. I will probably spend at least a few minutes talking about the wasted potential of Jasper. But yes, yeah, so that's where I'm going to stop today. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you like this series still. I hope I'm still doing a good job with this one. I will admit, sometimes I just do not want to watch my own content. Which is why I really need to figure out why my live streaming stuff is not working on this computer anymore. So that I can live stream these, start live streaming the recordings of these. So that we can get some back and forth going and I'll have a little bit more to engage with and it'll be a little bit more fun for me. But I do still enjoy, I especially enjoy, you guys seem to like these videos. I like seeing your comments on them. So that, that makes it worth it in the end. But as per usual, what do you guys think of any of the ideas that I presented in this video? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, you might as well like the video. Share it with anyone else you think would enjoy my content. Subscribe if you haven't. You can also check out links to my various social medias as well as the many ways you can help out the channel. Those will be in the video description. But either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.